Okay, welcome back to another exciting video. If you can't tell what this video is about, you can probably start guessing. Pulley, this is the conclusion to the pulley lab that we have done already. So, I'm gonna, I got a little something here for you to look at first. If you don't have this stuff, this is what you need. You need a title. Don't forget the name and date over here in the top right hand corner. Namus and Datus over here. I just almost spelled Datus. But anyway, so there's a date. You need to copy. The purpose and materials need to be copied exactly as you see on this paper. So if you haven't copied it or need to copy any of this, take a moment and pause. Okay, are you? Are we back yet? Or am I going to sit here and talk the entire time you write? I'm not sure how this works because I'm probably not in a room with you while you watch this. But anyway, hopefully you've copied all this stuff down. So you've got the purpose of the lab to determine the efficiency of a pulley system and to see what happens to the efficiency as the machine becomes less simple. So that's kind of something we're looking at. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, ring stand, two triple axle pulleys. So we did need two of these. By the way, if you prefer not to call these triple axle pulleys, you can also call them, oh, check this word out. Oh, my thing won't. You can call them, oh, don't mark out the word triple. Mark out the word axle. You can call them triple sheave pulleys. Ooh, oh, that's a crazy word. Let's see, two single axle pulleys, such as this. Uh, let's see, you had a small hanger, a large mass a small. All right. Looks pretty good for materials. Procedures. Let's see what I've got written here. Tell how to do it good for number one. And that's what you should do. You should tell exactly how to do it for the very first pulley. When all you've got is the one pulley and one weight on this side. Make sure, make sure you just say how to do it good for that one. And then you can say how to repeat it for all the other examples. So, now... Let's look at these little hints I put in here. Make sure and say something about it moving slowly. Also tell how to measure the distances. Make sure when you're going into this lab, and you might have some little stuff drawn in here, and you've got your pulleys. Make sure you tell somebody when they measure. This is huge. Make sure you tell somebody to measure from the bottom of the hanger. You can see my picture. From the bottom of the hanger, top of the table. Make sure you tell this distance. Make sure anybody doing this is going to know how to get distance input and output. Two big things I'm going to be looking for when I grade this is to see distance input and distance output and to make sure you tell somebody how to get it. I'm going to be looking to make sure that you say something about slowly uh, creep. Don't really say creep, but anyway, you know the idea. Make sure somebody knows that they're going to add weight to this little one until what happens. This moves with little to no acceleration down through here. That's what we're actually looking for in this, okay? So anyway, we're going to try and lift that one up. So, let's move on with the lab at this point. Alright, so let's take a look at what we got next. All right, conclusion. Well, you can't really do the conclusion just yet because you got to know how to finish your data, but that's what this video is for. So the conclusion, give the efficiency for each trial and tell what happened to the efficiencies as more pulleys were added in there. So that's what you should learn when you do your calculations. Uh, sources of error. The only big thing is sometimes somebody will have like an efficiency over 100%. Which basically you're just saying when you say that the efficiency is over 100, you're saying my pulley has created energy. I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. So if you have any efficiency over 100, I want to start hearing why your efficiency is over 100. Uh, chances are it's because you just plain mismeasured something. You probably measured the height strong that they travel or something. This report, when you're done, you're going to have your written report. A diagram of all six trials. Use a ruler, and you should also have a data table. And then four, something got left off of here. You should also have a calculation page. Calculation. 
So you should have a page for your sample calculation. So you should have four things. Those diagrams better be very good, by the way. All right, let's take a look at the data table. At this point, your data table should look something similar to this. Bump the camera, sorry about that. So anyway, I've got my numbers. I can do a couple things right now to make sure everything looks halfway decent. These distance outputs, let's see here. They ought to kind of, not necessarily, but they ought to be, like I got one here that jumps a little, but overall, by the time we get down here, you can really see that my distance output shrunk a little bit. So that's really what I want to see going on right here. I want to see that distance output going down. I also want to see this mass input going down because as we use more and more, more and more pulleys, it should have got a little easier and a little easier and a little easier every time to lift that weight. So these numbers that I've got from somebody look pretty decent right here. So now let's actually go into how to do all these calculations across here because all these are calculations. Well, let's just go and get a sheet of paper. Let's put her name and date. Don't ever forget your name and date in the top corner. I'm going to write the word sample sample calculations at the top of this page and now I'm going to start going through there's five calculations to be made my first calculation is going to be force output and that's what that FO stands for force output I'm going to get by doing this mass output times gravity my other calculations, I'm going to write down every equation you need. Well, use some sense. If force output is mass output times gravity, what do you think force input would be? Mass input times gravity. It's really hard making a video during assembly because we've got someone talking through the background of it. Let's just sit and enjoy it. So don't go to the gym. Outside. Mm, fascinating. Okay, so I'm glad we've got that. All right, so force output, force input. All right, next one. I'm going to find work output. How do you think we're going to get work output? Well, you're supposed to know the equation for work. Work is equal to force times distance. So work output should be force output times distance output. So we're going to use the equation photo on that one. Let's come back and do another one. Again, I told you there will be five calculations work input well if this is photo then work input would be phi di that makes no sense but anyway hopefully it will so this will be force input times distance input and the very last equation is actually for efficiency itself which is the whole purpose of this lab is you're supposed to find efficiency that's going to be work output over work input and then times 100. All this one is is a percent down here on the end. Well, let's go back to my data table and do some numbers. For force output, I'm going to use my mass output times gravity. So my first one is 0.1 and we should all be the same on this. So for me, it's going to be 0.1 times G, which is 9.8. Hey, we don't need a calculator for that. All that's going to become is 0.98 newtons. And the cool thing is, yours is the, my FOs and yours are going to be the same because we all had the exact same numbers on this part. So let's see. Wow. Again, can't get the word in. So this one would be 0.98 on this one. And let's see what my force input would be force input would be my mass input times gravity. So mass input times gravity. So let's see, my mass input is 0.105. So I'm going to go 0.105 times 9.8. And I'm going to break out a Casio for this. It should be very close. 0.105 times 9.8, 1.03. So 1.03 newtons. Now this is kind of interesting. It took 1.03 newtons to lift 0.98 newtons. Well, that's interesting. So about equal on that. 
So my force input, and R should be close. Yours should be close to 1.03. Mine is 1.03, though. And that's my force input. Now, to find work output. Work output is fo do. Well, there's fo, and then here is do. Distance output. So this is my distance output column here. So there's my do. Fo do. So I'm going to have... So I've got 0.98 times 0.291. So let's see if we can do this. So point fo for me is 98 times do for me is 291. Now I'm going to grab that calculator again and see if we can't get our photo. 0.98 times 0 0.291, 0 0.285. So 0 0.285, you remember the unit for work, uh, joules, very good. So we'll put a big J there beside that one. Now we'll do our phi di. So my force input, force input times my distance input. So force input times distance input. So for me, it's going to be 1.03 down here times 0.291 up there. So let's see what we got here. So for me, 1.03 times 0.291. And then let's see what we can do here. 1.0, ah, 1.03 times 0.29. Oh, I cannot type. Also, now you got it on the camera, so let's try it again. Point, oh, excuse me, 1.03 times 0.291 is 0.2999. I'm just going to change this one to 0 0.300 down through here. I'm going to put a J after it. So I need to fill in a little bit of my data table. My work output, my woe was 0.285. And then my work input was 0 0.300. So there's my input. So now to do my efficiency, efficiency is nothing but wo over y. So to do efficiency, my work output was 285. Don't know why I put that in parentheses. Over my work input, which was 0.3. And we'll times all that by 100 and get me in my percentage here. So here's where mine's going to be. Oh, I can hear the drum roll. 0.285 divided by 0 0.300 if you want. Anyway, equals times 100. And it looks like I've got a 95% efficient pulley system. So my first efficiency is 95%. Now, here's the thing. These efficiencies should go down. And you keep doing the same thing all the way down. To get all your FOs, it's just this times 9.8. That one times 9.8. 9.8. To get your force inputs, times 9.8 on all those masses. Then do your photo and your phi di. I love this lab, just forgetting to say the word photo. But anyway... Actually, it's making me feel a little Lord of the Rings. It's feel like a little Frodo going on. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, at this point, your calculation page should be done. It should look exactly like mine. Matter of fact, your very first thing should be a .98 just like mine. Then the rest of yours are going to change a little bit. But anyway, this is what your calculation page should look like. So that should be, this thing should be done. Now, in terms of this, your efficiency should go down. Like This one might be 90, and then it'll probably be like 85, uh, 80, 77, and maybe 70 on the last one down here. I got a question, and this is what I want your conclusion. Your conclusion, I just want these. I found my efficiencies to be 95, comma, 90, 85, set 80, however you want to do it. I just want to know these efficiencies. And I want to know what happened to them. And see if you can say why. Why do the efficiencies go down? Every time you add a pulley, every time you add an extra pulley, the efficiency goes down. Why? Why would your efficiency... It does get easier, 
but it's not as efficient anymore. Reason why is simple. Let's just pull his spin. And it stops. Why does the pulley stop? It's a little barren in here. It's got friction in it. If we had frictionless pulleys, we wouldn't have this problem. It would stay like 95 almost the entire time. But there's friction. And every time you add another pulley into this, you add a little bit more friction and the machine becomes a little bit less efficient. Heck, your car is only like 13% efficient. Which if you don't really understand what that means, it means this. If you pay $3.12 for a gallon of gas times 13%, it means 40 cents of that gas actually went in to making your car go forward. The rest of it was turned into heat by your car due to friction from all its components. That's kind of depressing. What's also depressing is if somebody watches this video one day and instead of 312, somebody looks at this and goes, man, I wish gas was still $3 a gallon. Times are changing, world. Wake up, America. Anyway, your data table should be completed. You should have the report. Then you should have your pulley page. Make sure on your pulley page that you label. And by label, I just mean something like this. Make sure that you come in. You don't really have to label the pulleys and stuff. Just make sure that you do have like some reference as to the fact that this is mass output and this is mass input. And you should really have like a nice pretty little hanger here drawn. Oh yeah, that's a good looking hanger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, bam. Those are, that. that's horrible. By the way, make sure you put a title on the top of your drawing pages. And don't forget names and dates on that as well. But anyway, this has turned into a 16 minute long video of excellence. And so I leave you with these parting shots of me going choo 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 Yeah, I know, it gets kind of boring around here. Bye.